Well. Deputy Speaker, and I want to welcome the opportunity as Deputy Chair of the Joint Standing Committee on Migration oh. to speak to the Grant tabling of our report okay. called No One Teaches You to Become an Australian, an inquiry into migrant settlement outcomes. Uh, Deputy Speaker, making a new home in a new country isn't easy, and yet thousands of people each year do so, and they make it work. And they work hard, and they're able to orient themselves into a new life here in Australia. In fact, uh, Deputy Speaker, since Arthur Call's post-Second World War nation-building migration program, millions of migrants and refugees have settled in Australia, making this country the most successful multicultural nation in the world. Our country has achieved the successful migration program through strate strategic planning and provision of well-targeted settlement services designed to assist newly arrived migrants and refugees with their settlement and integration into the broader Australian community. By focusing on English language training and community and cultural orientation, we have been a success story, as the chair has so rightly said. Settlement into a new and foreign country is not without its challenges, however, for both the newly arrived, the community and especially the service delivery agencies tasked with assisting the integration process. Melbourne-based Sudanese-born youth worker Gum Mamu, who works with the Les 20 Man Foundation in Victoria, summed up the challenges for migrants, especially young migrants and refugees integrating into Australian life when he said, and I quote, no one teaches you to become an Australian. And so, Deputy Speaker, this report aptly is named as such. And I'm told by Les 20 Men that Goom is very, very chuffed that the report has been named uh, after a comment that he made to the committee. Now, this inquiry was a timely opportunity to consider whether the settlement services available in Australia are appropriately targeted and sufficient to successfully support migrants and refugees, in particular the young, who have journeyed to make Australia their home. It was an opportunity to consider evidence-based material and to find out how the government could improve its support of new arrivals across the country to help migrants become contributing, engaged members of society and to ensure government migration resources are being used efficiently and effectively. It's clear Australia is at the forefront internationally of settlement and support services for new migrants. And as the chair said, uh, the committee visited uh, the UK, Sweden, Germany, and the United States in July last year, and our visit affirmed that without doubt. But of course, there is always more that can be done, and the evidence submitted to the committee makes a clear case for more flexibility within the migrant settlement program. The robust and consistent evidence received by the committee in the 115 submissions. Um, we received has for the most part been used to reflect the views of those who participated in the inquiry. The committee made a number of worthwhile recommendations for the government to improve migrant settlement services and uh, mindful of the time I won't be able to go through those at this point and I'm hoping to be able to do it at another point. Uh, however, I do want to address, uh, in addition to the many fine recommendations that we, we've made and as a committee we agreed to, not all of this report objectively reflects the evidence presented during the course of the inquiry. It does, Deputy Speaker, ignore crucial contextual details and places an undue emphasis on others. There is minimal or no evidence to justify some recommendations made by the committee. As such, Labor members of the committee dissent from recommendations 15 to 18. In particular, recommendations 17 and 18 are clearly outside the terms of reference of the inquiry. Now, despite minimal or no evidence, the report focuses on young humanitarian entrants from Sudanese backgrounds who engage in criminal activity. The purpose of this inquiry was to investigate issues relating to migrant settlement outcomes. Labor members, therefore, are concerned that the committee has drawn conclusions and recommendations based on opinion and anecdote, anecdotal evidence and has made recommendations outside of the scopes of the terms of reference. As such, some aspects of the report do not reflect the uh, evidence received and ignore the wider context of Australia's migration situation. Um, the focus of this inquiry on humanitarian entrance and youth crime missed the opportunity to review settlement outcomes for the vast majority of new arrivals. It is, however, as I said, despite this, a report that carries important recommendations around improving our settlement services programs by providing more flexibility and adjusting appropriately the nature and delivery of settlement services in order to meet the challenges of Australia's migration program in the 21st century. And to that, I commend this report. Thank you, Member Corwell. 